But he has flashing lights! All of the lights! <laughs> you make other content besides zombies this year? I will specifically. Oh my goodness, this is the loudest video. Sheesh! What a great way to intro, though. Oh, I like the way he edited that. It when the COD World at War devs were making extras for the fifth installment in the COD franchise. Originally, True. there was going to be a sequence at the end of the game where you were a Nazi in a bunker at the beaches of Normandy trying to gun down the waves of American soldiers storming through. In the end, you would always lose because the United States is invincible and has never lost <laughs> a single war, ever. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Normandy idea. Listen, there was one time Canada and the U.S. had a war, and as a Canadian, I gotta say, we definitely won. I was definitely not there, because it was probably like 250 years ago, but hey, we definitely took the W. Canada W, USAL. That's AI to level little resistance, they made it days Japanese soldiers after a bomb strike. When people saw them, they made comments how they looked like zombies. Foreshadowing. That is true. One day, Dan Bunting comes in and says, We want to do some extra content for the game. What should we do? Jesse Snyder, one of the devs, said he liked the idea of being run over. Like in the D-Day idea. It would make you feel... Come again? ...feel vulnerable. Jesse asked Dan if he had played any tower defense games lately. Dan said no. Dan didn't like the idea. Keep in mind, 2008 tower defenses were like... Pixel art games. There was no clash of clans into that. None of that, bro. It was it was rookie levels. Yeah, as it didn't really fit with the theme of World at War. Jesse told Dan about the simple base mechanics and how easy it would be to do. A few hours after discussing that with Dan, he talked to one of the lead designers, Sean Slayback. Sean told oh, Jesse about a Flash game he had played called The Last Stand. You play as a survivor during a zombie apocalypse and fight off hordes of zombinos. They try oh, to tear cool. down the large barrier protecting you. If they were successful, you'd become dead. Oh At the end of every round, <laughs> you'd get points to buy guns and stuff. <laughs> Why did he put the five noise? <laughs> Wait, go back. Protecting you. If they were successful, you'd become dead. Oh At the end of every round, you'd get points to Why buy did guns he put and stuff that? like that. Jesse That's Snyder so was playing that very game and had an idea. The idea came at him hard and fast. Jesse Snyder literally created COD Zombies. Everybody in the chat. You are obliged to put a Drake in the chat. That's all I gotta say. Like a zombie, not to you. You are, you are implied. <laughs> the OG World of War tracks were on live, man. In real time, like buy the weapons and repair the barricades. Plus, you could play at co-op. He proposed the idea to Dan, and he wasn't too thrilled because they didn't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> what is the editing of this, bro? Jesse told it to other members of the business organization company, and they thought it was rather nice. They already had the animation to these Japanese guys, so it would be a no-brand required situation. Dan would always say it would be too much work. Then Jesse learned that Dan had a scripter and programmer held hostage in order to make a tower defense game mode for <laughs> point defense. It was a bunch of areas from- They held him- Honestly, listen, uh, considering what we heard about Treyarch Studios' work culture from BO4, how holding a developer hostage is honestly not out of the realm of possibility. The campaign where you would progress through the level and kill waves of guys. The problem was that it was lacking the stuff from the last stand that would make it fun. It didn't have the progression of buying weapons or repairing barricades. And by god, you can't even call it bunker defense because you weren't even defending anything. <laughs> Jesse went off by himself, on his own, to make a tower defense game mode prototype. He originally took a house from the Russian campaign and made it spooky. I've never really realized the whole story from COD Zombies. I've never heard of it from this point of view. I never knew that they decided to make the house, and that's why technically this is the very first Zombies map ever created. It's a random house. It's a custom Zombies map that you can play on World at War. It's not fun. <laughs> I'll be honest. Boards and windows and stuff like that. Yep, that's he about it. The prototype to a couple of other devs, and they liked it's, it. It's too. a house. Creative director Corky Leancool approved. <laughs> My boy, Cork. I don't know if he honestly. I don't know if Corky still works at Treyarch. I'm assuming he does. I don't think he went to Deviation. I'm assuming he still still does work there. Yes, and Jesse continued to work on this. 
Dan wanted both his game mode and Jesse's game mode in the game, but Dan's project was cut because it wasn't working and it was probably stupid. Jesse, Sash. the programmer, Austin Krauss were told to work on it in their spare time as Treyarch had just entered crunch mode. <laughs> yeah, when Treyarch enters crunch mode, that means get the game out immediately. Eventually, they moved past the original prototype and refurbished a bunker from the Japanese campaign. This is what became Nocturne and Toten. Jesse uh, asked for zombie animations instead of just using shell shock people animations. They somehow got a very talented zombie actor person to do mocap sessions with them. Who is this guy? Chat, look at his face. Look, look at this. Who is this dude? Then the Nazi enemies from the campaign were retextured to look very spooky and very dirty and very dead. Very dirty. One by one, the features from the original knock were added in. Power-ups weren't originally going to be in the game, but Jesse wanted to give the mode an arcadey feel. And one day... Could you imagine zombies without power-ups? I'm just thinking about that. Like, imagine if power-ups just weren't in the game. It would honestly suck. I'm gonna be honest. Like, power-ups is, like, the greatest thing about zombies. When you, you when you take out zombies and there's, like, a little mini reward, like a double points or a carpenter, like, it would not be the same game. Yeah, without, well, without a doubt. Max Porter wanted to show Jesse something very <clears throat> cool. And it wasn't his penis. Turned out to be the ray gun. My the boy! It was his yes, futuristic PP. Yes, Tons of people contribute to the ray gun in their own way. That's basically the origin story for the mode in the first map. Zombies has wall weapons, the mystery box, power-ups. Dude, the World of War music is, I'm telling you, it's unrivaled. In my opinion, chat, if I were to ask you, what's your favorite music from a Call of Duty? For me, it's World of War. Nothing beats like the, the raw adrenaline rush you feel from the doom like the the deep voice it sounds like something out of god of war honestly from world of war it really does and doors mo is very close to being like cut listen to this times. it's amazing how it actually made it into the like game. i'm about and to Mo's fight someone doesn't feel with the horse of world world war ii theme they were going for people from everywhere who bought the game and finished the campaign were given a special spooky new mode as a special surprise, spooky one that would become a staple of the franchise maybe lebron james Oh, so loud. I will check out that video of Johnny J. Thank you. Appreciate you. As long as you the heart of the sun. <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> Things will change. We'll add caught zombies into society. Let's do it. I do kind of really like that Reznov was like the thing that introduced zombies to everyone. Like it ended, he ended the World at War campaign and introduced zombies. There's, a, there's something really poetic about that, I think. I thought that said Doris. <laughs> After the success of Bob Bad, Eric had the opportunity to do more with the mode in the DLC. They decided to make another map, a bigger, better, spookier map, Verrucht. Verrucht Or Verrucht, as the Deutschers would say. It's set yeah. in the Wittenau Sanatorium. The map is essentially a rework of an area from the campaign. Lads, do we go to Verrucht IRL? This area from the campaign was turned into a multiplayer map, but the MP version isn't as accurate to Verrucht. All of the maps in World at War are reworks of multiplayer or campaign areas. The map starts out by separating you from your team if you're playing co-op. There's two rooms divided by... More maps need to do what Varuk did. I'm being honest. There's not enough maps that separate you from the spawn. I think that was a great mechanic that never really got built fully. Like, they did it again in Exo Zombies. <laughs> but nobody remembers that. By a door that can only be opened by turning on the power. Nobody remembers that, bro. The power turns on the new features. Something big. The Perca-Colas. Perks were huge Woo! and became extremely integral to zombies. I love this animation. There were four perks introduced in Verrucht. Juggernaut gave you more health and made it so where you could take five hits before demise rather than two. I also and love the original perk jingles that Craig Houston gave these. They're really good. You can find them online, I believe. And there's double tap. It increases your fire rate. Speed Cola speeds up your reload speed. Let's go, Speed Cola. Cola speeds up your life. Speed Cola, best perk jingle, and the best version of Speed Cola, Shadows of Evil. There's no debate here. 
quick revive lets you do with the quick revive's good the too. Teammates faster. <laughs> the Percatolas are basically the perks are multiplayer turned into chemically engineered. Soda. True. Even the soda machines have their own themes and jingles. Perks made the mode easier, so the map was made harder. Much harder. We're up to <laughs> what the What is this editing? The map is essentially a ton of tight hallways combined with newly added super sprinter zombies. They are always on crack, and they will always always give you on a heart crack attack when you see one super sprinting at you. Yep. This map also added traps. <laughs> Look at this guy. The only people who really care about traps are this high round play because they do infinite damage and are one of the only things that kill zombies on really high rounds. The mystery box now moves around the map instead of staying in one room for the whole game. It Ooh. moves if you spin the box a lot. I mean, hey, sometimes was the, the box only can way. be in some absolutely terrible spots. Every time you die in a game of zombies, it shows the scoreboard and the camera pans around the map. Look at his name, bro. Who am I watching? One day when working on this, a sound designer named Kevin Sherwood came up with a quick tune that he thought would sound cool. The G! The G! Kevin Another Sherwood. sound designer, Brian Tui. And Brian Tui, I got to talk to them both. Brian Tui is so great, man. He's the one that, if you guys remember at the end of the 9 trailer, he literally told me that he hired, uh, like, uh, a portion of a choir. And they just went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the trailer ended. I was like, that's sick. <laughs> quick snippet into a full fledged song. After not, Kevin quickly relearned how to actually play guitar and then made it into a song. That's cool, man. It was called Lullaby for a Dead Man. <laughs> <It even laughs> <features lyrics. laughs> when they tried to find their singer for the song, Brian told Kevin of a producer named Alina Siegman. Only a Siegman, but hey, I love you. Apparently, she could sing. And Minor spelling mistake! Interrupt by flushing a toilet three times, the song Lullaby for Dead Man Plays. The toilet flushing was a reference to an older game. Every map since featured an Easter egg song. All of them are very pleasant. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why I said COD Zombie songs are great for working out. Edgiest metal songs to ever exist. But I must say, some of the lyrics are downright creepy. Totally necessary sing along. <laughs> what is this editing? <laughs> I mean, they definitely wanted to. I mean, dude, they wanted to horrify you back in Barack, man. The later Easter egg songs would be about the zombie storyline. They would write the death song for each map, and then Kevin would expand those songs into a full one. DLC 1 proved that zombies was here to stay. They made more <laughs> DLC <maps>. 1! <laughs> I like the way he talks, man. You kind of reminds me of Donkey. I know no way you're sleeping. sleeping. Yeah, when? Huh? Give me the time and date. Varuk must have done pretty well, seeing as there was another zombies map, and it was big. Shinonuma set in a swamp in Manchuria, which is a territory in China and Russia today. But during World War II, it was Japanese territory. The map is inspired visually by the suicide forest in Japan and features a similar spooky atmosphere. I never knew that! Wow! I had no idea that Shinonuma was actually inspired by the suicide forest in Japan. You know why I know about the suicide forest in Japan? Logan Paul! The map features perks which now reside in four different huts. Each hut has a random perk in it, meaning each location may be more or less useful depending on whether it has jug. The map introduces the first boss zombie, the Hellhounds. They have their own round. They and really the didn't keep the it. ferocity from the dogs back in World of War. I mean, uh, when you hear even the sound when they spawn in on World of War, it's different from Black Ops 1. It's like, like the lightning is so loud and it's like, and then you hear, and it, you don't feel like that in BO1. BO1, you just look at him and go, but BO3, you, you just sneeze on the dog. He goes away. Announcer, dank babe clouds shroud your vision while dogs snarl and prowl you. I mean, bro, that's what I'm saying. The dogs are relatively easy, and you were always awarded a match. <laughs> relatively a easy. <laughs> the Hellhounds totally aren't reskins of the attack dogs from multiplayer and campaign. 
The map adds oh. a new wonder weapon. The Wunderwaffe DG2. Wunderwaffe. What the hell is a wonder I think because of that quote, everybody mispronounced the Wonder Waff back in the day. Because when I heard the Wonder Waff when I was a kid, everybody's like, did you, you, you see the new Wonder Waffle? And my kid brain is thinking like somebody just found like a new waffle maker. <laughs> they found like a new waffle maker to like, I'm like, what are you talking about fam? I'm just so confused. And then they whip this out. I'm like, this doesn't make waffles. <laughs> So confused. He's so confused. It shoots electricity that can chain zombies together. It's always an insta kill because it does infinite damage. In Shino Numa Numa, players realize that if Shino they go to more open area, they can gather up the zombies by running around in a circle. The zombies behind you will group up in a thin line, forming a conga line of death or a train. If you, will. I like back that conga line of death. It was called a or train. <laughs> or back into that. I was about to say it. Train, and you can probably see why people don't call that anymore. <laughs> You can probably see why people don't call it that anymore. Uh, no, I don't see why, man. Might be seen as offensive to some people. Oh, I don't know what you're is also about. a special map because it introduces four no, playable clearly, characters I'm that eventually became as iconic as the mode itself. <sighs> Player one is Tank Dempsey, a badass marine who is a marine. Literal Easter eggs. Tra tra Treyarch is like, yeah, there's an unsolved Easter egg world at war. Just look at all the capital letters in the description. Okay. Let's relax! Let's relax, Nemesis! Oh, chill! You got about 20 seconds till I show up in your living room and have words with you. What's going on, man? Out of ammo. Get the hit! Player 2 is Nikolai Belinsky. He is the Dunk Soviet. My name is Nikolai! I'm almost out of vodka! I, I mean ammo! Stay away from my. Lads, I'm genuinely curious. Do you prefer Ultimus Cast or Primus Cast? I always have this debate with certain people. Because I have this undying love for Ultimus. What the? With this weapon, I shall paint the square red. Get it? Red square? Because I'm a right. Fuck. I'm out of ammo. Maybe I should just drink instead. Piss on someone. Maybe I share these points with state. Ultimus premise is dude depressing. I agree, man. Because when I think of premise, that's honestly what I think about. Like, because it was cool back when BL2 and BL3 were happening. We we're like, oh, what's premise? But now I look back at it, I'm like, oh, they were just depressed. <laughs> it's just depressed Ultimus. I have made mess in proud. You know Player what I mean? Takio Masaki, another stereotype. Fold the Emperor! The weapon is low on honor. Draw near the Fold Emperor! This weapon fires pure honor! Maybe so I guess that gives you a good answer of morality. Like, would you rather be confused and happy or know the truth and be sad? That's the difference between Ultimus and Primus, to be honest. When I when I look back at it, honestly, that's the difference. Shout out to Hives. Hives, you were getting mad rewards earlier. You should have checked that out. It's no more. But shall be again. The Easter egg is not so hard this time. <laughs> Wait, I'm no, what? That's a quote? What is this a quote? I've never heard this. You got it, bro, you gotta check out Kajora's video, Hives. Oh, it's just a power switch. Player four is Edward Richthofen, a mad German scientist what who is a, a bit unstable in the head. Ah, he's right. Be afraid of Jess. Be afraid of the doctor. That's actually so ironic because his premise version was most afraid of death. I just realized that. This cut is the deepest. This out bullets I'll have to resort to. Stabbing. Stabbing! These are all so iconic. Death. I've heard these like thousands of times. I cannot torture my minions without power. Damn shit, you go turn it on. Shino Numa introduced these characters. Fire. This uh, the video's editing is incredible. This is one of the best zombies videos I've ever seen. Not even joking. Just for a reason. All throughout Shino Numa you, are videos to tell a secret storyline. Cut it right now, it sucks. Hey, it gets better. My Milo writing this down. 
it links R to Rick Shader and Uma and establishes seven. that Rick Toffin knows a lot more than the other characters. In the spawn room, there's a hanging man. He's missing his left hand! The left hand can be found on the Vrug power switch! W, bro. How much do I donate for you to rewatch a seven hour storyline video on 0.25 times speed? So then it would be what? More than, it would be 28 hour long video. Um, I'm going to have to say definitely 10,000. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm going to make it so egregiously high that nobody ever does it. It also establishes Element 115 in the storyline. Oh, Shino Numa did that. See, everybody gets it wrong. Everybody thinks Kino did it. Nah. Shino Numa started Every it, bro. Every sci-fi franchise usually has some sort of space magic energy that makes anything possible. Element True. 115 is well known for being is a part that, of alien conspiracy theories. Is that? Sometimes UFOs are said to run on 115. 115 is responsible for the zombies. Someone drop. Dude, do not drop $10,000, please. Please don't make me do that. These, the Wonder Weapons, and basically everything else. They got 115 from a meteor that you can find outside the map. The early zombie maps make heavy use of environmental storytelling, rather than explicitly telling you. Shinonuma was a very important map that started a lot of things, but isn't remembered too fondly because it was overshadowed in many ways by the next map. True. Element this is very true. He's spitting facts. I'll drop 2.5k for you to rewatch it on stream. If it's not in 0.25 speed, then sure. 0.25? What am I going to understand in 0.25 speed? What do you mean? Dear Reese was the final zombies map of World at War. That's my boy! It's essentially a rework of the map Nightfire. Dear Reese means the giant enjoyment. It is weapons. <laughs> in, in, in who? Factory near Breslau, Germany, which is actually Polish territory in modern times. True. The map introduced teleporters, which aren't really needed Shout because the map is actually quite compact in its design. You activate teleporters by linking them to the mainframe in the spawn. You need to run from whichever teleporter to the mainframe in under 25 seconds for it to work. It's still difficult, bro. You got me bullied. Shock if Alpha! They are. It only seems like they were designed to be an escape method more than anything. Linking all three teleporters in a time trial will <laughs> Why are you putting this music on here? A machine which harnesses 115 space magic to turn your gun into a pew pew gun that kills the zombies even harder. Chat. Was the pack bunch of sexual reference right from the get go? Yes or yes? I mean. Yes or yes? <laughs> like, it, they really made it obvious on World of War, bro. Even the Wonder Weapons are packable. The process costs 5,000 monies each time. 5,000 monies! The map introduced a new piece of equipment known as the Monkey Bomb. The Monkey. <laughs> you throw the monkey and it distracts all the zombies on the map. VR 11 better. <laughs> dogs are not very smart. The monkey bomb is really handy if you plan on reviving someone who is literally getting trampled by a horde of zombies. This is very it true. It's a reoccurring weapon and is featured in most maps. It's actually insane how little the monkey bomb has been altered throughout the years, to be quite honest. Like, chat, the upgradable monkey bomb in Black Ops 3 was a huge deal. Like, that's crazy to me. You know, it took until Black Ops 3 for it to actually get, like, some sort of extra progression. Also, I did the Bowie knife. A big knife that does extra damage and is worth 3,000 rupees. It's not exactly 3, rupees. revolutionary. Speaking revolutionary. Yeah, the thing I... that was added to Dear Reese is something known as the fly trap easter egg. It has nothing to do with flies. No one cared to be able to. I mean, yeah, it's true. If you shoot a control panel outside of the map with a packed gun, it will... Ooh! Scare me. I don't. <laughs> I can't imagine people finding that out for the first time on Darice and being like, what the? <laughs> like, this is Call of Duty. What is this? <laughs> now you must find three toy things across the map. 
Very at no. And then you get the Annihilator, the greatest wonder weapon of all time. That's my favorite. Yeah, the first person to probably find out must have been like, what is going on? IDKL people found that back in. Well, okay, the fly trap to me makes the most sense to find. You know why? Because literally the idea is that you're at that barrier and you're just shooting and just spraying into the zombies that spawned way out there. And you just must have randomly hit the switch and then you would have seen it and been like, what is going on? The the teddy bear step though, this is the part that I I don't know how people found, to be honest. Now that you've completed the game, guess what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Easter eggs. Now that you've completed the game, what happens? Literally, game over. <laughs> that Easter egg was very weird, but people were none the Budweiser to know where this will lead the mode. Like the last map, Darius has some secret story stuff. Darius has way more little things packed in it compared to Shinonuma. It really does. To start, yeah. the name Darius is a reference to... Why you crazy? Which was... <laughs> What did this man just say? Project to dig a network of tunnels under Poland. These were supposed to be used for a variety of purposes. Apparently, they were going to be used for weapons testing. The Nazis also had plans for powerful wonder weapons. The real world influence, though, on zombies, I think, is very interesting. Like, you can make a whole video on that for real. Wonder weapon. The only wonder weapons that were built were not UPU cannons, but were instead very inventive guns like the SDG 44. It was the very first assault rifle and is the basis of the AK 47. <laughs> okay, look at this freaking meme, bro. Guy who told the joke, guy who said it louder, the AK. I mean, it is really true, though. Project Riza was never finished. Along with Project Riza, various also references Die Glocke. Die Glocke is German for the bell, which is somehow the least ominous, but also the most ominous name for anything ever. Die Glocke was a rumor that the Nazis had an anti-gravity time machine device thing bullshit device. The main source of the rumor is from a Polish book called the Prado of Wunderwaffe. The teleporters look quite like Die Glocke. And That's so wild! I never knew this. Wow, look at them! Like, a lot of people, I genuinely believe, like, a lot of conspiracy theorists, when they played World of War, I remember people saying that, like, like, Call of Duty figured out some, like, bad information that they didn't know. And that's why I feel like they made stuff like Call of the Dead. You know when George is sitting in the chair, he's like, we found stuff that we were never supposed to find. Like, I genuinely wonder what type of stuff Treyarch unearthed. Like, it's very interesting to hear about. Flytrap Easter egg. The archway structure outside the map is based off of a real-life structure, which is rumored to be a D Glocka landing place thingy. The fly trap he strike even references D Glocka when the circle of things fly away. Not yeah, no other zombies map has this many like historical references for sure. Not related to no any way. other pre-existing conspiracy theory. Darius established the group responsible for most 115 related inventions. Group 935. A secret organization that was originally founded to help improve the human condition. One of the coolest logos in sci-fi fiction history, in my opinion. What do you guys think? W or L? I, I mean, just look at it. He's like grabbing like a planet or like an atom with like all the planets around it and a car. Like, what a sick logo. They got low on funding. Seriously ahead of its time. To manufacture high-tech weapons instead. The zombie storyline is so fascinating because it's not just a bunch of made-up bullshit. Exactly. It's real life. Well, not until later. <laughs> made-up bullshit. Yeah. Theorist is a very special map because of its introduction to the Pack-a-Punch machine. It allows players to get to higher rounds without use of the traps or Wunderwaffe. Yeah. The Pat machine would allow zombies to go further than just one game. After the DLC season was over, World at War received modding tools which means mods and custom apps that anyone can download from the worldwide interweb. I miss this! Dude, even World at War got mod tools. World at War! That should be the staple. That's how we should know. It's like, if they add mod tools, then they love it just as much as World at War. <laughs> I should be saying that about Trey, bro. That's toxic, bro. People played custom apps for years. For real, though. World at War lasted way longer than most Call of Duties just because of mod. World at War got mod tools. What's your excuse, Cold War? I mean, that's what I'm saying. You spitting. Tools. Zombies had a very successful first run. Slobbering eight-year-olds across the globe love the mode. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Summer nights were spent camping on the Dairies catwalk. <laughs> about to see is totally real footage from 2009. 
I mean, I'm gonna be real. If you weren't on YouTube in 2009, you wouldn't get it, but this was every COD Zombies video back then. Chad, he, he saw my. This is just like my first playthrough of Shadows of Evil, man. <laughs> That's how the video ends, bro. I'm dying. What? The video just ends like that? Dude, this guy has 80 subs. This is one of the greatest videos I've ever seen. I'm subbing. I'm liking. That was hilarious. That was one of the most well edited videos I've ever seen about Call of Duty Zombies. Genuinely, seriously, what a W. Great job, man. Did he make a part two? Oh, it's only part one. I'm gonna say it, bro. I'm commenting. Make part two. Please. Gotta add that. Gotta add the please. Gotta add the please, man. Gotta add the please. Link his channel. It's called The Super Duper. <laughs> what is his name? The Super Duper Dude, but soup is spelled like the food. What a wild. What a wild man. Honestly, dude, that, that was a great video, man. Bro liked his own 